Good evening, dear students and listeners. My name is Professor Vugar Mamadov, Department of Forensic Medicine, Azerbaijan Medical University. Today we will speak about the forensic medical traumatology, one of the most important and large uh, chapters of forensic medicine, because we will discuss the traumas, different body injuries. So, what is the body injury in from point of the forensic medical expert? Any trauma and body injury, it is the infringement of anatomical uh, unity of structure and or physiological function of any organ or tissue uh, uh, as a result of impact of any factor of environment. So, if this factor environmental factor uh, acts and makes infringement of anatomical structure or physiological function, it is the body injury. There are different kinds of the body injuries depending of kind of and nature of such factors. Uh, this may be uh, mechanical factors, this may be uh, uh, physical, chemical, thermal, uh, uh, psychological factors, etc. But when we speak about forensic medical traumatology, we will focus mainly on mechanical factors which contain 90 95% of all injuries which uh, we do in our forensic medical practice. We do it in both clinical forensic medicine uh, during investigation of living bodies, but also during investigation of corpses during post-mortem investigation. So, uh, all the forensic medical chapter of uh, uh, forensic medicine is divided in three main branches. Uh, branch number one is uh, uh, injuries which were created uh, by blunt force, by blunt objects. Uh, blunt objects, it is objects which has no sharp edge or sharp end. So, it can be a piece of stone, a piece of wood, it may be part of different parts of the human body and usually it happens like fist, arm, uh, head, uh, leg, etc. Uh, this second part is the uh, sharp objects injuries and it may be uh, act of the arms or any objects with sharp end or edge and for example knives, scissors, nails, etc. And the third part, which is firearm injuries. Uh, so let's start uh, from blunt force in the same uh, sequence which I mentioned. But before, I want to give you some definitions. Definitions like I mentioned objects and arms. What is the difference between arm and object? Uh, uh, in our literature, arm is any object which is produced by human, human originated object with the purpose of making injury during attacking or defending him, yourself. So any kind of object which was intentionally made by man uh, with this purpose may be considered as arm. Usually it is firearm or it can be also the cold arms uh, and it is not only fabrically produced it may be hand produced also so the other definitions injury so it refers to any disruption of anatomical integrity or disturbance of function of the body organ and tissue due to influence of external factors it also refers to any harm whatever illegally caused to any person in body mind reputation or property all wounds are injuries but all injuries are not wounds so, uh, we will speak about what is the wound. A wound is any discontinuation or disruption of any tissue of body by injury, but all injuries are not wounds, as I mentioned. Abrasion, it is caused by injury to superficial layers of skin, and we know that the superficial layer, it is epidermis, it is a disruption of epidermis, or maybe subepidermal layer also, produced by contact of blunt or sharp weapon coming in contact with the skin. Bruise, another uh, kind of injury very commonly used in forensic medical practice, 
we see it quite often it refers to rupture of capillaries and veins leading to escape of blood into the tissue beneath the skin called extravasation of blood without discontinuity of skin or covering of an organ fracture it refers to disruption of anatomical integrity of the bones hurt it refers to bodily pain disease or infirmity caused to any person so let's start from blunt force injuries traumatization is caused either by a broad of blunt edged force that compresses the affected tissue is called blunt trauma in medical legal practice injuries of this type are frequently seen in accident victims in traffic after falls in the course of assaults first fist blows kicks and the use of blunt edge objects may produce injuries of this kind some methods of suicide for example falls from a great height being run over by a vehicle are also associated with blunt trauma from the forensic point of view the skin chains caused by blunt force are of particular significance as they may sometimes allow reconstructive conclusions the term abrasion or excoriation or scrape describes a skin injury caused by blunt trauma blunt trauma abrading the epidermis from the corium which in a living person leads to the exudation of serous fluid and after drying the formation of a crust or scab in dead bodies abrasions also may be caused perimortally postmortem assume a yellowish or brownish red color due to desiccation bruising occurs in soft tissues if soft tissues are crushed and vessels are ruptured under the skin so that blood escapes into the surrounding tissue in especially in fresh fresh injuries this space occupying extravasation often leads to local swelling in the beginning subcutaneous hematomas or bruising are bluish in color uh, at the first minutes it is red because of uh, a lot of oxyhemoglobin but after separation of oxygen and hemoglobin it gets blue it stays blue uh, for a few days uh, sometimes until the end they are bluish and blue but then they can discolorate to, to turn into the uh, green yellow brown because uh, hemoglobin separated in hemoglobin then biliverdin bilirubin etc that is why this discoloration it is very helpful to identify the time of cause on the uh, 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 cause of this bruise so this color change during the several days uh, uh, and it starts from periphery to the center getting the greenish and yellowish uh, due to the decomposition of hemoglobin is very very important so <clears throat> the uh, skin wounds due to blunt or blunt edge trauma manifest as tear like transactions and they call uh, the, we usually call frequently lacerations laceration is the wound uh, and differently from abrasion here not only superficial layer of the skin is damaged but all beneath layers of the skin we know the seven levels of the skin these uh, layers are damaged sometimes even beneath uh, a deposit tissue muscular nerves uh, vessels are also damaged and in such case because of the uh, capillaries veins are damaged we can see even some blood uh, uh, and bleeding Craniocerebral trauma due to blunt force of great importance both for the clinician and for the forensic medical expert usually one differentiates between linear fractures circular fractures and depressed fractures of the skull as well as fractures of the base and the skull cap depending on their location small impacting surfaces for example hammer may cause whole fractures or tangential impact may cause terrest impressions a fracture system consisting both of radial and circular fracture lines is referred to as a spider's web fracture circular fractures in circling the foramen magnum 
are called ring fractures. Hemorrhage from a basal skull fracture pouring into the nasal sinuses involves the risk of fatal blood aspiration if the patient is unconscious. So uh, air embolism may be another consequence of a skull fracture due to traumatic opening of a venous sinus and simultaneous entry of air. <coughs> a brain contusion is an extravasation of blood into the cerebral cortex. The areas of cortical contusions are particularly often found on the cerebral surface directly opposite to the point of impact, counter-cow contusions. The brain lesions are often associated with edema and the resultant increase in intracranial pressure microscopically characterized by a flattering of the convolutions. Intracranial but extracerebral hemorrhage subsequent to blunt trauma are divided into epidural, subdural hematomas and supraarachnoid hemorrhage. In most cases, an epidural hematoma is associated with as ipsilateral fracture of the skull. The hemorrhage is mostly due to a rupture of the middle meningeal artery or any of its branches. At autopsy, a hematoma is found in the space between the skull and the dura mater, which shows spindle-shaped outlines as horizontal section and displaces the brain to the opposite side. A subdural hematoma spreads between the dura mater and the leptomeninges, usually covering one of the cerebral hemispheres like a cap. And subarachnoidite hemorrhages of traumatic genesis often occur in connection with cortical contusions above the countercap lesions, but may also be situated in the region of the basal cisterns when arising from a traumatic tear of a cerebral artery of the circle of villas. The number of possible internal injuries of the trunk and the extremities also large. Autopsy experience shows that even the absence of external injuries of the body doesn't preclude fatal internal injuries. Possible causes of such trauma are not only accidents, for example, road traffic at the place of work or during sport activities, but also intentional bodily harm and homicide. The direct impact or indirect effects due to inertia may cause ruptures of internal organs and or vessels and bone fractures. Among thorax injuries, the following might be mentioned as examples, fractures of the sternum, ribs, the latter sometimes being associated with piercing of the adjacent lung, pulmonary contusions, ruptures, ruptures of the heart and the major vessels, cardiac tamponade, pneuma and hemothorax as well as traumatic paraplegia deserve special mention as they produce particularly serious functional consequences. Traumatic ruptures of the aorta preferentially occur at two sides, in the distal part of the arch and in the ascending part above the base of the heart. Blunt trauma to the abdomen may result in ruptures of the liver, the spleen, the mesentery, the kidneys, and in rare cases, the gastrointestinal tract. The ruptures of the uh, bladder uh, and liver are quite often. So from simple to uh, more complicated, if we start the skin injuries, abrasion or excoriation, mechanism is the pressure of tissue, soft tissue and movement over the skin with a hard, blunt object results in three types of abrasion, moving abrasion, friction abrasion and the imprint abrasion. There are two types of moving abrasions. These are scratches and grazes. Scratches are produced as a result of sharp or object passing across the skin produced by fingernails, pins and thorns. Fingernails produce abrasions which are wider at their start and narrow at the end. Pins and thorns produce abrasions which are narrow throughout and have a tail at the end. The importance uh, that the presence of scratch on the victim's body indicate struggle. And grazes, they are produced as a kind of moving abrasion. It is produced by the contact with rough objects, resulting in usually irregular removal of skin surface. Direction is determined by heaping up of tissue tags at the end, and roadside accidents usually result in grazes on the body of a person who is walking on foot. As important 
Grazes usually contain the particles of the inflecting agent when examined by the help of hand lens. Friction abrasions. These indicate both movement and imprint caused by linear pressure over the skin with movement, for example, ligature mark on the skin during strangulation asphyxia. Both parts of mechanism of abrasion pressure and movements are present. And finally, imprint abrasions. These abrasions indicate pattern of the offending object. The appearance may vary of distorted due to elasticity of skin, also called stamping, for example, tire mark on the body, radiator grill mark on skin, or marks of tough sticks on skin. We can uh, uh, sometimes investigation is interested about time of causing of these injuries, abrasions, and we define the age of abrasions by the discoloration and by the scab. They, at the beginning, they are very fresh. When they are very fresh, they are red colored only. In 12, 24, 24 hours, the red colored scab is uh, formated. Then the next two, three days, it is reddish brown. Then the, from periphery to the center, it starts to be healed and scrap getting off. Uh, it is still a septic abrasion the next four, seven days. And after two weeks, complete healing and separation of scrap, and new skin is coming out. Scrap is a collection of injured epithelium, dried blood, or serum, and lymph. And that is why four stages in the healing of abrasions we can uh, differentiate. Scrap formation, epithelial regeneration, subepithelial granulation and epithelial hyperplasia, and regression of epithelium and granulation tissue. So, more detailed, this mechanism you can read in the textbook but from medical legal aspects abrasion is very important because they hold valuable information in respect to site of impact possibility of internal injury identification of causing object patent abrasion sometimes they indicate the direction and they indicate the purpose of injury on the character of event for example if the localization on the neck it is may it can say as about the strangulation or throating. If it is about nose and mouth, it is like smothering about things and genitals, it kind of rape and sexual assault. About the anus, like sodomy, on bony prominence, like fall. That is why, uh, and the final point, which information they hold, it is time of injury. The second skin injury, which we mentioned, it is bruise or confusion in certain textbooks. They created due to sudden pressure upon the tissue due to impact by a blunt weapon, tears, which tears capillaries and large blood, blood vessels, resulting in the escape of blood into the extravascular space. Shape of bruise is different. It may correspond to shape of weapon object, more or less round in shape, raised from surface of skin slightly. Bruises become more prominent as the time lapses. They are sometimes not present at the site of impact, so-called as ectopic bruising, because at that site, the tissue is so lax that blood travels under the skin due to gravity. For example, black eye. When you see bruises here, it is not important that site of impact was here. It can be here. It may be also in the low extremities, the similar situation. So, clinical presentation of bruise, it is a fresh bruise is red in color, as I mentioned, but uh, the second clinical presentation is pain at the site of bruise. Surface of bruise is raised from the skin, swelling might be seen at the site of impact, and epidermis is intact at the site of bruise. So, the most differentiation factor of bruise and abrasion, that epidermis here is intact, so uh, uh, non-touched. Factors modifying the shape of bruise are condition and length type of tissue. For example, in soft tissues, large array is bruised, in harder tissues, lesser. Age is important. In old age, skin and tissues are more lax, so more bruising. Sex is important, more bruising in females due to laxity and subcutaneous fat. Uh, diseases, because coagulation uh, condition, platelet and blood vessel disease increase bruising due to more bleeding. Uh, greater the vascularity of injured part of the body, greater the bruise. So uh, there are such factors which can be considered. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, as it was noted, con uh, bruise is an array of hemorrhage into soft tissue due to rupture of blood vessels under the skin caused by blood trauma. These contusions may be present not only in skin but also in internal organs such as lung, heart, brain and muscle. A large local collection of blood in an array of contusion is referred to as hematoma. So difference between bruise is we, we see it externally microscopically. We don't see hematoma. To, to see hematoma, we need to make the investigation, uh, uh, other postmortem research or surgery, uh, dissection of tissue, and to see hematoma when we see the cavity filled in by sp blood spots or by blood. So uh, hematoma we can see also during radiology investigation, X-ray, etc. That is why, uh, if we don't make these dissections or uh, special radiology investigations. All this extra vasation, it is either bleeding or bruises. Microscopical, if we see it, it is bruises. So these bruises might reflect the configuration of the object used to produce this bruise, uh, but it is not important. Now, should, uh, the size and severity of bruises is not always indicative of the amount of force applied. Sometimes we, we can see this small bruise but force was very significant and led to death. Sometimes we can see big bruises, but not very significant, not very important, and not related with the death. So uh, sometimes there is a difficulty, difficulty to differentiate the bruise from postmortem lividity and hypostasis. That is why there are certain criteria which you can refer uh, to from the textbook how to, uh, to, to differ them. But generally, it is margins, shape, ph phenomenon, color change, and microscopic differences. From a medical legal point, it uh, bruises are also very important because they hold very important, valuable information, having big uh, forensic medical importance. Because sometimes, by their shape, we can identify the object by degree, by severity uh, of expression of bruise, we can see. We can tell something about degree of violence. Uh, we can get idea taking into lo uh, account localization, degree of violence, also the purpose of injury, was it suicidal, homicidal, or accidental. We can identify time of injury according to certain scheme by color change of the bruises. Whether true or false, uh, uh, these bruises due to actual injury or by application of irritant substance like marking not juice or on parts with an easy reach etc and site of impact except two exclusions on the eyes and ankles bruises are always uh, uh, created on the site of impact so the third skin cage, uh, uh, injury skin injury due, due to blunt force is laceration so there are it is tearing of skin and subcutaneous tissues caused by blunt weapon. It is uh, classified as split laceration, overstretching, grinding compression, and cut laceration. Cause of split laceration is sudden compression of tissues between two hard objects. And main features is external hemorrhage, bruises of the edge, crushing of hair bulbs. It might be also noted that margins are irregular and inverted but inversion you can see on the by hand lenses overstretching is caused by angular impact with localized pressure in the form of pull or push and push and features is flapping of skin bruising of the point of maximal pressure for example compound fractures and roadshed accident grinding compression is caused by localized pressure causing tearing and separation of skin from the underlying tissues which are crushed and main features is incomplete tearing, less external hemorrhage, raised injury area, pockets of fat and blood, for example, crushing by hard objects like run over by wheels of a heavy vehicle, collapsing buildings, etc. And cut lacerations caused by heavy edged weapons like hatchet, chopper, axe, uh, the skin is cut, bruising at the edge, hair and uh, are pushed into the wounds, underlying bone may be involved, injuries give the clue of weapon. The laceration is a tear in tissue caused by either a shearing or a crushing force. Lacerations of the skin tend to be irregular 
with abraded and bruised margins. They are caused by blows from blunt objects, falls or impact from the vehicles. So lacerations is very easily to differentiate from the any other wounds caused by a sharp object because of these features. Sometimes we need to identify are these wounds defense uh, or not. And uh, uh, to defense wounds due to blunt force usually uh, uh, located on the hands of the victims. So sometimes we need to identify is are these wounds are antemortem or postmortem. Uh, sometimes we need to identify is are they suicidal or self-inflicted. Very rare, except that uh, very rare that laceration may be uh, or bruise or abrasion. Uh, uh, no, no, sorry, bruise and laceration may be uh, uh, caused by himself by, for suicide only maybe in mentally sick persons. Most of cases, it is accidents or homicides. Now I am moving to sharp force injuries. This special form of mechanical trauma includes cutting, stabbing, and chopping. So uh, 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 in stabbing, uh, we mean penetrating. Cutting uh, injuries uh, reflected by formation of incisions. Incisions, these wounds, uh, wounds are caused by any instrument with a sharp edge, uh, mainly knife, razor blade, scissors, glass fragment, piece of metal, etc. Cuts are smooth edged transections of tissue, gaping in a spindle shape way if they have sufficient depth. The angles of the wound are acute. If the blade is moved repeatedly with, within the wound, several angles or superficial tails may be visible at the end of the uh, wound slit. Usually the length of incised wounds is greater than the depth. It is very important to differentiate the incisions from the stab wound. Cutting wounds can be homicidal, suicidal or accidental. In fatal injuries, forensic differentiation between suicidal self-infliction and homicide is based on similar criteria as those described below uh, uh, as, uh, in, in further uh, in, uh, in the textbook uh, you can see the details how to differentiate the uh, uh, stab wound and incisions. Fatal cuts in homicidal assaults mostly involve the neck or uh, frontal side of the uh, arms. Uh, so, a stab wound is caused by a pointed object, not only knives, but also other instruments, for example, knees, uh, scissors, uh, files, spikes, screwdrivers, etc. So, as, a as it penetrates the skin, it produces a slit-like wound. A stab usually has clean-cut edges, which, at least with regard to knife stab, are usually not abraded. So, uh, and the... Uh, suicidal safe infliction is also possible but rare, much rarer than incisions. Homicide is to be considered if the injury is localized outside the regions typically chosen for suicide, especially if the region is difficult to reach with one's own hand. In most cases, a fatal outcome of cutting or stabbing injuries is due to internal or external uh, sanguination. In stabs into the into the chest, possibly together with unilateral or bilateral pneumothorax or cardiac tamponade. Chop wounds are caused by the powerful impact of sharp-edged instruments like axe, meat cleaver, saber, machete, etc. The presence of an incised wound of the skin with an underlying comminuted fracture or deep groove in the bone indicates that one is dealing with a chopping weapon. While most chop wounds appear incised, when there is a combination of cutting and crushing, they can have both incised and lacerated characteristics. In forensic practice, chop wounds are seen after real and simulated accidents, uh, but also on victims of homicide and though very rarely after suicidal attack. Injuries due to impalement represent a special type which combines the elements of a stab with blunt trauma. Impalement, uh, penetration in the direction of the longitudinal axis of the penetrating object may occur, for example, after a fall from high on a wooden or metal 
metal pole vertically protruding uh, from the <coughs> from the ground. <coughs> so, as said, to, def to, to define the incision from the stab wound, I will give some features of the injury. In incision, we have more external hemorrhage, bleed freely and profusely. We have, we have clean and regularity of cut margins, smooth and clean cut and bed of wound, no crushing of tissues and hair bulbs, retraction of gapping of tissues present, tailing phenomenon is present. Uh, after stretching of food, the scar is smooth, fine and linear. Shape is beveled, oblique or flat, horizontal. Uh, uh, in horizontal position. Length is greater than the depth and breadth, and uh, this uh, helps to differentiate the incision from stab wound and also from laceration. So, uh, in stab wound, the main uh, characteristics is that uh, wound of entry it is generally bigger than the wound of exit because of the tapering tip of the stabbing weapon. Uh, in, in terms of the shape, generally corresponds to the weapon used. If it is knife, it is elliptical, dagger, circular, needle, cruciform, file, trigonal, long-pointed conical weapon, trigonal again. And if it is screwdriver and arrow, it is slit-like wound. Skin aperture is usually a little smaller than the breadth of the weapon due to elasticity of the skin. Margins clear cut and inverted. If the weapon is not quite sharp, some bruising of the margin is may be seen. Edges can be averted if weapon is rusty. Wound channel because during stab wound when it is penetrated, it may have entry and exit. Uh, it is deep. Depth of stab wound is greater than its length and breadth. It depends on length of the blade and thrusting force, but usually. Always, if depth is bigger than length, you say it, it is stab wound. In the incision, the length is always prevail over the uh, deep depth. Direction of stab wound can be determined by drawing a line joining the wound of entry and exit, or by X-ray, for example. If knife is plunged into the body with such great force that the full length of the blade enters a paternal abrasion around the stab wound can be also caused by the guard. Sometimes uh, in forensic medical uh, practice we may request it to help investigator to identify the weapon. In such case we request to submit the weapon and we make the uh, comparative uh, analysis uh, to make uh, identifying the weapon and injury. Can this injury may be done by this weapon or not? Uh, and you can read about mo this more in the textbook. Sometimes we are requested, have these injuries been inflicted by own hand or by other hand, self-inflicted or not? Uh, uh, so, uh, fractures. Uh, so, uh, before the moving fractures, I, my just recommendation to read more about this in the textbook because we cannot speak about this more during today's lecture. 33 minutes already spoken, but I still have fractures, transport traumas, and firearm injuries. When we speak about fractures, I would say that uh, in terms of regions, fractures from the different regions of the body, uh, different localizations, have particularities, and this also need to be read from the textbook. Fractures of the mandible, fractures of the face, for example, are very different from fractures of the skull, uh, uh, from the body, from the trunk. Fractures of the mandible, maxilla, zygoma, zygomatic arch, are produced predominantly by assaults and uh, motor vehicle accidents, for example. The fractures of the extremities, uh, uh, fractures of the bones of the extremities can be produced by either the direct or indirect application of force to the bones in the very, very different situations. It may be falling down, it may be car accidents, etc. Pelvic fractures uh, deserve special mention because of two unusual aspects. First, 
an immense amount of force is required to disrupt the pelvic ring. Second, because the pelvis is a ring, disruption of any portion of it is usually associated with disruption of another portion of the ring. Pelvic disruption of fractures are classified by the direction of the force. And there are four categories, anterior, posterior compression, lateral compression, shear, and very complex fractures. Injuries of the ribs is very important in forensic medicine. There are four general types of rib fractures, uh, which are uh, pathologic, uh, primary because of bone disease and tumors of the bone, iatrogenic rib fractures during the resuscitation, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, etc. Rib fractures caused by direct localized violence and rib fractures caused by indirect violence. So healing of the uh, fractures is taking uh, usually more than three weeks. That is why they always lead to long uh, healing period, which makes, which is very important in clinical forensic medicine to identify the severity of the injury. There is special scheme tables how the different kind of the injuries are healing, uh, septic injuries, non-septic injuries, which systemic reactions following trauma. Uh, 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 may respond to the different kind of injuries, which causes of disease, disease death may happen during these injuries. Uh, venous thromboembolism, fat uh, embolism, air embolism, excuse me, uh, uh, primary neurogenic shock, secondary shock, uh, injury of vital organs, crash syndrome, uh, uh, all mentioned in the textbook. Please read. Uh, finally, before the going to the firearm injuries, I would say also that uh, traffic injuries are very important uh, in medical legal practice. The medical legal investigation of traffic accidents victims, uh, uh, it is mainly focused on determination of injuries which cause the death. Primary importance are questions related to the reconstruction of an accident in the broadest sense. This includes, for example, the type of involvement in the accident as a pedestrian, driver, co-driver, backseat passenger, cyclist, uh, in pedestrians, the position at the time of collision, in occupants, the identification of injuries typically caused by seat belts, the determination of pre-existing disease, toxicological examination for exogenous substances, alcohol, illicit drugs, pharmaceuticals, and the preservation of trace evidence, blood, hair, and tissue particles on the collision vehicle, etc. Although most deaths in road traffic are due to accidents, the alternative possibility that sudden death occur due to a natural cause or suicide or homicide must also be taken into consideration. So uh, we investigate the pedestrians, we investigate the drivers, passengers, uh, any people who somehow suffered due to the traffic accident and got either injury or found its death. Uh, besides car accidents, uh, rarely but happens cyclist accidents, motorcyclist accidents, ship accidents. In Azerbaijan, it's not quite often, but in the uh, countries like Italy, Spain, etc., it is very often. Britain, it's very often. So, uh, by statistics, roadside accidents among traffic injuries, of course, the highest. And uh, more accidents is uh, in the age of uh, 20 to 35 years. 50% uh, 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 less accidents among females rather than males. So most uh, suffering group of the people are male. And uh, it is age of 20 to 40 years, let's say. Alcohol and drug abuse is uh, quite often is a uh, real reason for uh, this. Seat belts in our country is still, uh, except the drivers are not widely used. Airbags not in all cars are happening. Uh, that is why uh, this take, should be taken at, into account. Besides car, motorcycle and cyclists, we need to also uh, to mention also that railway injuries uh, also may have a place and this may be suicidal or accidental. Suicidal if a person jumps in front of train or lays on the rails, the injuries are very severe and primary impact 
are too extensive it happens and air crashes crash involving light planes crash of commercial aircraft uh, uh, these cases causes of crashes factors which uh, led to the crash crash scene investigation uh, crash patterns all of the, all of these are uh, part of investigation in flight fire helicopter crashes etc all of this need to be investigated so I'm moving to the fire on injuries and it is 40 minutes of our talk. I was requested for 30, so I will try to finalize in the next 10 minutes the firearm injuries. Firearm is defined as an instrument or device by which it is possible to propel a projectile by means of explosive guns, gases generated by combustion of an explosive substance. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the projectile uh, maybe in the different forms uh, it may be projectile as a form of bullet in rifled weapons they can be covered bullets may be covered semi covered and formally by own type they can be two types pointed and round nose and the second form is shots or pellets with small lead particles can be done at factories and handmade in shots what is uh, used it is generally present in shotgun cartridges uh, they may be made from uh, felt cardboard and stout paper a cushion or plastic so a function of words is to separate the projectiles from the propeller uh, to seal or obturate the bore effectively during the uh, shot prevent expand the gases from escaping and allow optimum pressure to develop so from time of the chain of events, striking pin strikes the prim premier, the premier igni ignites the gunpowder. The chamber pressure increases. The projectile is propelled towards it exits, and chamber pressure after that reduced to the zero. Speed of the shot uh, in rifles it is more than three thousand feet in a second. In handgun shotgun it is nine hundred one uh, eleven hundred feet in a second uh, terminal or wound ballistics depend upon type of weapon part of body type of tissue ammunition design angle and intermediate objects depending on the type of weapon a distinction is made between handguns pistols or revolvers rifles for example carabines and assault rifles used by the military military rifles used for hunting shotguns and many special forms such as blank cartridge guns slaughter guns air rifles etc modern pistols have a magazine that is inserted into the grip after firing a cartridge its case is ejected as the slide is recalling revolvers have a rotating cylinder holding the cartridge after firing a shot the case remains in the chamber a rifle barrel has a spiral a pattern of groovers and elevations lands on its interior surface. The smooth bores of shotguns don't have spiral grooves and land. They are designed for firing shot shells. There is term the caliber. The caliber of a projectile represents its diameter in millimeters or inches. The caliber of shotgun barrel is not identical to its inside diameter, but a measurement based on history. Shot caliber 12, for example, has an inside diameter of 18 mm, whereas caliber 16 has inside diameter of only 16.8 mm. The cartridge of handguns and rifles consists of a case and a bullet projectile. At the bottom of the case, there is a premier, and above is the propellant. Nowadays, usually smokeless nitro powder. For in ancient weapons or replicas, it was black powder with many gases produced. Shotgun shells are fired from smooth bore shotgun barrels. Instead of single projectile, they usually contain a large number, 200, 500, to, from 200 to 500 spherical pellets made of hard lead, which spread it after the shot, which gives you more uh, efficient uh, hunting, for example. The injuring effect of a projectile is based on direct tissue destruction along the wound track on the one hand, 
and lesions apart from it on the other. The latter caused by change, change in pressure and by displacement of tissues. In fluid-filled organs like heart, urinary, bladder, or in the neurocranium, the radial expansion may lead to a hydrodynamic explosive effect with bursting of the encasting structures. The purpose of clinical examination of autopsy of victims with gunshot wounds is, among other things, to answer the following question. Number of hits. Did the projectile pass through the body, through and through gunshot wound, or did it lodge in the body? So if it is a blind uh, injury, you will, you will find the bullet in the body. What was the direction of fire? Are there any clues to the type of weapon and ammunition used? From what distance was the shot fired? Does the evidence of the injuries and the traces suggest self-infliction or involvement of another party? So many questions. And radiological examination is always advisable in any case to find and document the location of bullets or bullet fragments retained in the body for to respond to these questions. Very important is to identify the entrance wound and exit wound. To, uh, to determine the direction of a shot, it is imperative that entrance and exit wounds are recognized correctly. The entrance wound is typically characterized by the following features. A central aperture, circular or oval, due to loss of tissue, minus tissue we call it. The rim of the hole denuded of epidermis, abrasion color we call it. A grayish black ring of dirt. Uh, so, ring of dirt, abrasion color and minus tissue, uh, we call it uh, Pirogov triangle. So, existence and finding out this Pirogov triangle gives you possibility to identify entrance wound. The exit wound is usually characterized by a slit-like or stellate severance of tissue with clean edge. The size of the skin wound often, although not always, exceeds that of the entrance wound. According to the criteria of wound morphology, there are four ranges of fire. The contact shot, where the muzzle is in contact with the body, the close range shot, the medium range shot, and the distant shot. When a gun is fired with the muzzle held against the surface of the body, skin, contact or, or clothes, contact shot, soot containing powder gases enter the wound and expand under the skin separating the tissue layers and causing a pocket with soot deposition. The entrance site is bloated by the expansion of the penetrating powder gases, forcing the skin against the end of the barrel so that a patent muzzle imprint is formed. We call it Stanzmark. In close range shots, gunpowder residues can be identified around the entrance hole, soot and powder particles. The grayish black soot leads to extensive skin discolorations of a cloudy nature the intensity of smoke soiling decreases with growing firing distance. The term medium intermediate range shot is used if the bullet entry hole is surrounded only by unburned or partly burned powder grains deposited on or forced into the skin of the clothing. Powder tattoo, in contrast to close range shots, there is no smoke soiling discernible around the entrance one. In distant shots, gun, smoke, and powder particles will not reach the target. So these points may help to identify the distance of the shot and to respond to investigation. The patterns of shotgun injuries varies depending on the distance between the muzzle and the target. Contact shots are characterized <coughs> by a large roundish defect with marginal abrasion, blackened wound edges, and abundant soot in the depth of in the Wound. In close range shotgun wounds, the entrance hole is surrounded by soot and gunpowder particles. Uh, uh, if shots are fired from short distances, words or plastic cups may penetrate the body together with the shot or cause excoriations or characteristic shape of the skin. <coughs> to classify a gunshot wound as a suicidal, homicidal, or accidental, a synoptic evaluation of the evidence obtained from the injuries and clothes, the results of the forensic investigations and the other circumstances of the case have to be made. <coughs> injuries and death uh, uh, in, uh, from firearm uh, is also including the part of 
explosives, explosive trauma. So due to the detonation of explosives, uh, uh, it's usually seen either as an accident in some uh, construction work, but mainly nowadays in present world as a terrorist assault against individuals. Uh, letter or parcel bombs, dynamites against vehicles and buildings. Accidents are mostly due to improper handling uh, of explosives, terrorist attack, and fireworks. Suicides also maybe happen. Suicides by means of explosives are not often, they are rare, but sometimes happens from grenades, for example. Uh, it will have been happened and usually restricted to persons with professional experience who can uh, have accessibility to them. Mostly it is accidental or, or homicidal. <clears throat> so this is all what I wanted to share with you uh, uh, to speak about the forensic medical traumatology. Take care and see you next time. Hope to see you alive uh, after coronavirus uh, alert finished. Bye-bye.